Hi guys! Welcome to my first YouTube video. Um, let me just... I don't like... Um, basically, I just thought I'd film because I keep putting it off because I'm nervous and whatever, but today is feels like the day that I should just do it and go for it. So, um, my name's Beth. I'm sure we'll get to know each other a lot better over the next few months. I have quite a lot of stuff planned that I would like to video and talk about and I just think it's going to be a really fun thing for me to do. Um, obviously, you've probably already seen the title and you're probably a little bit confused as to what this video is going to be like and to be honest with you, so am I. I don't even know what I'm going to do yet. I uh, keep telling people that I'm planning it. I think I'm going to take my burrito to Ewan right now. Um, I was paid eight pounds for a burrito. Um, I've just basically bought so much tap that I don't even need um, with money that I don't even have. I'm parked in such a dodgy place. Just cause if anyone who knows me knows that I will never pay for parking, hence the parking ticket I had the other day. Um, it's just ridiculous. I don't like paying for parking. See how long you stay there. Oh wow, you're gonna be shaky. Um, I should probably turn that off. I'm gonna get copyrighted on my first go. Um, so you've probably seen the title and you're probably a little bit confused about what I am about and what my plan is. Um, and basically, I want to have this channel to raise awareness of a little condition known as Pure O. Now, for those of you that aren't aware, Pure O is a mental disorder that, that it thrives in um, different ways. So I'm sure you've all heard of OCD, which is Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. And I'm sure most of you, when I said that, first thing you thought about was, cleanliness and cleaning unless you're watching this video and you do suffer with OCD in which case you will know that is really really not the case um my car is a prime prime example of that <laughs> I don't know I have Luke's say bottles coke bottles wrappers I god knows how long they've been in there for um I have a friend that actually cleaned out my car with a carrier bag put everything into a carry bag for me, all the rubbish, everything like that. Uh, and I made, a, I promised him that I would put it in the bin when I got home and it's still in the car. Sorry, Henry. <laughs> so, but thanks for all your hard work. Um, I'm gonna be discussing sensitive topics. I'm gonna be discussing um, what it's like to live a, with something that you are now necessarily I want to say labelled with, but I feel like label is a bad word and it doesn't necessarily need to be. Um, if you have Puro or you have OCD uh, or you have any other mental illness or disorder, you'll know that it is... Hey. You'll know that it is pretty much... Um, it is a life-changing thing to have. It's a life-changing thing to have and it's a lifelong condition to, to have and to live with uh, and if Manchester City Council would like to sort out these potholes I would be very 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 grateful because it's really affecting my camera angles someone's staring at me in the car next to me and I wonder if I'm ever gonna get used to this I bet they're thinking look at that I did a Fiat 500 vlogging that is definitely what I'd be thinking. I'm here just to talk about and to bring light to a lot of things that some, some other people may or may not know about. Um, I'm hoping that some of you are here because you've seen the title and you're looking for somebody who can relate to what you're thinking and who can relate and because at the moment you may or may not know what you have, you may or may not know if it is OCD, because I promise you now that if you've got OCD, you don't think you've got OCD for a very, very long time because you think you are different and you think that you are the one exceptional case, case that um, that isn't OCD. But I can promise you now that we've all been there and we've all thought about these things that you're thinking about right now and whether it be the most terrifying thing 
that you can think of to the most criminal thing you can think of I, I promise you anyone who's suffered with OCD will will know that that is not that is not real and the fear that it comes with is not real we have a distinct way of viewing the world and viewing ourselves that is miss it's distorted it's a distorted view of the world and it's a distorted view of ourselves because I know I'm not some of the things that I think I may or may be uh, I have thought that I am I am not those things and in reality all these thoughts that you're having are oh I mean this is difficult so this is really difficult to do because I want these videos to be educational for people who don't understand and I also want them to be knowledgeable enough for people who have it to understand and it's a really hard balance of, because the nature of some of the things that come with this illness are not something that you necessarily want to talk about without being judged in a certain kind of way and from my experience I'm just gonna start with my experience so my experience with Pure O started when I was probably born fresh out of the womb. Ew. <laughs> Ew. Um, when I, you know what my first memory of it? I was about nine years old. And maybe this will give a little bit of an insight to how silly yet like soul crushing these like feelings that you're having can be. So I remember being nine years old and I what is this car doing? Okay, sorry. I remember being nine years old and I remember the little things like thinking um, if my, if I didn't do X, Y, and Z, um, then X, Y, and Z had happened as a result of me not doing the first X, Y, and Z. Um, to give an example, uh, if I didn't pick up that piece of rubbish on the floor and put it in the bin straight away, um, then my grandparents would die. And if I didn't, walk a certain way or act a certain way or be a certain way or say a certain thing or repeat a certain thing or do something different then someone else would die or something bad would happen or and that is fairly common i know that a lot of people do deal with that kind of thought process on a daily basis and that just because you have those thoughts that doesn't mean you have obsessive compulsive disorder i promise you um i actually saw a meme on facebook today that was like <laughs> Don't step on me at 27. Don't step on the cracks or, cracks or you will die. Um, yeah, that's common. That's normal um, because it's just a little process that you have to make sure that you know you're in control of things. However, the difference comes when it is every single second, every single minute, every single hour of the day that you are thinking these things and you are doing things mentally within your head to cancel out the things that you think you have done wrong or the things that you think you have like will do wrong or may do wrong or have done wrong or thought about wrong um and it is horrible so i was nine years old and i remember being at home and i remember wanting my mum to be home she was out i think she was on like a work like a works night out or something and it must have been like 10 o'clock at night it wasn't even late and i remember being just sat in my bedroom window like if i do not watch every single taxi or every single car that pulls up and um, like uh, that's driving past my house if i don't watch every single one of them until she gets home then she won't come home because she will die in a car crash because you haven't made sure that every single car that's gone past is not her and it made me ill like it sounds so silly and I, god I wish that these were the things that I were thinking now um, as the OCD has manifested and got worse and worse over the years um, but I, like let me just rule this out like I can promise you now I know a lot of people may go oh you know you maybe you had a bad childhood maybe you had a trauma or something or anything like that <laughs> I had the best the best the best childhood anyone could have asked for and if my children even have a half of the childhood that I had I will be happy because I had an absolutely amazing childhood. I had the most wonderful parents, sister, brother, like whole family. So that is not a factor in this. Um, and it's just a prime example of how it can happen to anyone. Like it can, it doesn't need to have a reason. And no matter how much you are looking for a reason, 
it doesn't need to have one it can just happen and i am a strong strong believer that it is maybe i do think that i do think that your your life experiences do make a difference in how you are with um something like ocd and i do actually do believe that it could be learned um but there is a huge huge sorry for the camera it's playing up um there's a huge huge a huge portion of this that i believe is genetics that i believe is in your makeup who you are how your brain works um serotonin levels the way you receive and analyze data memories thoughts feelings emotions i am an extremely extremely sensitive person <laughs> um, i've got better as i've got older but I'm, a, I, like, I'm an extremely sensitive person i'm a crier i'm emotional i feel other people's emotion like incredibly i am have you seen that thing on facebook that's like when a boy tells a story and it's like a straight line and then it's like when a girl tells a story and it's like a million different roads this is how this video is going and this is how all my videos are going to go so i do apologize ever since i was a kid i was just so adamant that i didn't want to cause anybody any trouble and that i didn't want to get get into trouble uh, and that if i ever had any inkling that i'd done something that may have, may get me into trouble that again made me ill so i could never do anything like you know being a teenager i'd never i didn't drink until i was 19 years old i didn't even know that it was like to be drunk until i was 19 years old um drugs is not something that i've ever ever taken part in still to this day um less so because of the um behavioral implications but less so because i get in trouble um but now as i'm older more sorry i think my camera got bored of me um but less so of how i deal with these kind of things but more in the sense that i know that i don't want to put myself in a vulnerable position um, and maybe potentially not remember things because that is the worst that is the feeder for OCD anyone who knows if you've had a drink and you've got OCD if you've had anything like that and you have pure OCD and you can't remember a portion of the night oh wow can your brain make up some wild things that may have happened even though probably just got a kebab and went straight home oh no in I promise you you've got OCD and you forgot five minutes of even five minutes of your night your brain has convinced you that you have definitely, definitely, definitely committed the worst crime in the world in those five minutes and you have no memory or recollection of it. Well, on that note, I'm just going to get some petrol. So, you can stay there for a minute. Why did I just forget how to work? Uh. Purse. That was well more expensive than I expected it to be. Like, I fill up my tank when I get paid, and, like, it's usually, like, £36, and it was... It, I had to stop it at four manually because I can't afford any more than that. <laughs> so, um, hey, to the new angle. Um, where was the talk? What was I talking about? Um, uh, what was I talking about? I, I, you know, I always talk about having PRO as a kid, but I can't remember what... Where was that? I lost my, uh, train of thought okay um i'm gonna move on anyway because i feel like i've rambled enough now um about a few things but um so one thing i wanted to touch on is like i know i've mentioned the fact that i had a great childhood <laughs> i had a brilliant childhood like uh, i'd love to go back and just be like five years old again five five years old to like 12. um I'm not going to go into like my high school, like secondary school kind of time because that's, that's, that's for another video because I think that that's like a, probably, that was probably like a big portion of why and when I was saying earlier about how I think that even though it's majority genetic or majority, you know, part of my DNA and my makeup that I do have a severe case of PRO. Um, I do think that my time in secondary school uh, did play a part in how I not, I think I would have had it no matter what. I think I would have had these thought processes no matter what, 
but I know after like learning um, how you know how your own body works like you know like that when you do one you get spots you know that at this time of the month or when you got cold you're like you know how your body reacts to those kind of things and when I get in a stressful situation and anxiety is formed I can just automatically feel now because I've made such a bad relations not a bad yeah now I've made such a negative correlation between having this intense intense burning anxiety to having severe intrusive thoughts I, I keep losing my train of thought and I'm sorry I know this is really hard and really rambly but I just kind of wanted to um, I mean, I may not even you. I may not even put this out there, but I just wanted to kind of give you give you like a rough idea of like, as a child, some of my experiences in kind of knowing that something wasn't a one hundred percent. I didn't behave or not behave. I behaved the same way as other children. I was a very good child, um, apart from like the odd cheekiness. Um, and like wanting things my own way that that was me that is me that's my personality but in terms of the the feelings and the phobias and the fear that I had over certain situations was not the amount I was having it was not normal now I know some children do have like little things like you know somebody had like a like a fear of like I don't know normal fears this is the thing I don't want to put too much attention on the fact that you know it was present as a child and because I don't want anyone to worry if you've got any anyone in your family that they are young and displaying like signs of having random thoughts like to a degree a lot of children have signs of OCD and obsessive compulsive disorder the majority of children have them because OCD is an act actually is a very childlike way of thinking of things because in in a sense OCD or not in a sense OCD this is OCD there's no gray area with OCD like it has to be black and white like there has to be an answer and a reason for every single thing that they're feeling thinking seeing having experience life experience there has to be a reason um, so grey doesn't exist and that's why in like a lot of children display signs of it because children don't understand what like grey area is um it's black and white like it's mine or it's yours or it's you know that's why they struggle with sharing like it's mine or it's yours or that's mine that's mine um can you come home i want this i want this and that's like those kind of childhood things they're normal um it's when it starts creating an emotional response that is not normal that it becomes a like a problem um, so just in my experience in growing up with in my childhood with OCD and pure OCD um, the symptoms are always there the symptoms are always pre like prevalent prevalent is that the word um, they were there um, so there's just a couple of my experiences uh, just one quick one before I nearly get home um, my mum probably always wonders and she still to this day thinks it's just an excuse to not make her a cup of tea um, because well I can now because I'm older and I don't have the phobias anymore but at the time as a kid I hated hated making or preparing or doing any form of like food or consumable product <laughs> for somebody because if I did prepared that and I'd made that I was responsible for that person and I know it sounds silly but if every time I made my mum a cup of tea if I wasn't paying enough attention to it how do I know that I didn't poison it or that I didn't wash the cup properly or that I didn't give them food poisoning or how did I know that because if they then got ill my fear would be sky sky high um, because because I caused it and it was my problem and it was hard you know it was hard and I thought that like if I made someone like a cup of tea or 
I made a family member a cup of tea or I made them some food and I used to love making cheesecakes and things when I was a kid. I would always have like a horrible, horrible phobia of that person getting sick or that person getting ill over what I like made them. Um, and it was really sad actually because I used to love making things. I used to love making like I used to, f I found in this Philadelphia like advert that when they brought out the dairy milk Philadelphia that we could do like a cheesecake and I made it the other day actually and it was gorgeous and I had no worries about making anyone sick because I ate the whole thing um, <laughs> but at the time I had a severe phobia of like making that person sick because I didn't want to be responsible for it um, and it wasn't nice uh, but they were the, the, the things that flagged up as red flags for me in the sense that something that should have been a joyful experience and that made me happy was always going to be tainted by the way I perceived it and the way I thought of it and that was the saddest part so I'd spend all this time um, going out and buying my ingredients for you know a cheesecake and, and it's this sounds so silly but I'd I'd go out I'd be excited I'd be so happy and I'd get home I'd make it I'd have a great time and then the minute it was done this wave of like <laughs> anyone who experiences anxiety or anyone experiences any any form of things like that will understand the wave that rises through your body and it it comes to the top and you know that wave would come and the whole experience would be tainted because that experience was now long no longer fun anymore um and all I'd want to do is just throw the cake in the bin and nobody would ever have to see it or touch it and <laughs> it was sad it was hard um, but I don't want it to be a bad thing I just want you guys to kind of understand um, that if you have anyone going through it or you have anybody who experiences those kind of things that that it that it will be okay because I'm okay and this series that I'm going to be doing on you know growing up as a child with OCD growing up as a teenager um, being diagnosed or being in a relationship being a family member with OCD um, this series is going to be an educational thing for, for everybody and hopefully a healing process for me and I just want to make awareness for the fact that something that a phrase and a word and a uh, concept is used so much in like mainstream media and mainstream um, vocabulary is um, of, like OCD everybody knows it but do they know it you know do they know that, they, that it's not what you think do they understand the meaning behind it um, and that's kind of what I want to do with this so I just want to say thank you for if you made it this far for listening to my rambling and listening to my um, gibberish um, and I will see you in the next video and and I'm really nervous so thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon I did it <laughs>